So Thank my you. husband, actually, I'm, I, my husband is just right beside me. He's, he's wanted, so he cannot be the camera. Travel, food, lifestyle, and a lot more of life we like. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Life Be Like. Join me today guys for my meal of the Sri Lankan, the typical traditional Sri Lankan meal. Uh, today, I think in my previous video guys, I already mentioned to you before that I uh, am doing a tuition class, an English tuition class for one family. And today that auntie have arms giving. In Sri Lanka, there are different typical types of arms giving. Uh, uh, literally, arms giving is like Thanksgiving. So, if maybe a daughter in law is pregnant, they will do an arms giving. If the kids is sick, sometimes they will do an arms giving because they, for them, uh, Sri Lankans are very superstitious. They always think that if a kid is sick, it could be because of the negative eyes of the people on the surrounding, the neighborhood, or somewhere else. So, so it's like. Sa Tagalog, we just called it bati, right? The bati. So, for them, they have to do the arms giving to feed the people, you know, to exchange that negative with the positive vibes. We're sharing food, sharing what you have. So, I don't really exactly know what is the reason why they did the arms giving. Uh, but this one is, normally they will invite you in the house, but uh, they, they know that I don't, I don't go houses for this. I'm busy at home, so they sent me a food this morning. So this will be our breakfast. My husband is sitting inside, and I set up a small table outside with this background. We don't have electricity because of the raining. It's too much raining for how many days now. So I'm just thinking to bring you outside to eat. So this is the backyard. This is our our uh, parking parking at the back of the house. So. Join me. I, I, I'm talking a lot, but join me. for Before I start, let me introduce the food that I'm going to eat. So this one here, they call this kiri bat. Kiri is milk, but bat is rice. So this is, from the words it says, this is a rice cooked in a milk. But it's a coconut milk. So rice, sticky rice cooked in a coconut milk. They cook it sticky and look, they will cut it in slices. Depends on how they want it. This one is cookies. They call it cookies in Sri Lanka. Remember, cookies. But I think it's like a literally like um, cookies in English. But they call it cookies. It's crispy, it's crunchy, and it's yummy. And this one, if you go to the streets of Sri Lanka, you will see a lot of food like this. Or maybe you heard the name, keong. Keong, but there are different types of keong. This is one of it. They called it uh, sini keong or atirasa. Sini keong, sini sugar actually. And uh, I don't really know what is keong. And then there's one that's very popular. It has a, like a bulk, like you know, bubbles in the middle that normally you would say it's, it's like, it's look like this, right? It has this um, protruded area in the middle. They call this like konde kaong, but I don't know why they call it konde kaong because in Sri Lanka, konde is hair. I think it's not a food with a hair, no. <laughs> but okay, this is atirasa, sini kaong. And then this one is mung kaong. Mung from the word mung ata, which is mungo beans in English. So inside is a mixture of uh, cooked, softened, uh, mashed uh, mungo beans. And then they have, they will, I think like, Make sure it's sticky. They will cut it into pieces and then they will dip it in a butter and deep fry it. So it's also crunchy. Here is a one typical bread of Sri Lanka. This is actually a bread. It's called uh, Nyanakata. This is a uh, gluten free bread. There's no gluten in it. That's how it uh, differs from the other. And this one is, they call this. Ada. In Sri Lanka, three words you have to remember. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yesterday is Iye. Correct. Iye. Yesterday is Iye. Ada. Today is Ada. Tomorrow is Heta. But 
it differs on the spelling, but I'm sorry, I'm not Sri Lankan. I have a problem with pronunciation. I think this is ada with the H. And then the today ada is spelled as E-D-A. Am I correct? E-D-A without H. This one is A-D-H-A. So it's ada. Ah, E-A-A-H-D-A. A-D-A is this one. Ah, no, no. One eternity later. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. So this one is Ada, which is A-D-A. And the today is A-D-H-A. So anyway, for me, it sounds the same. That's why sometimes I'm, I'm scared to speak Sinhala because uh, although I can understand and I can talk, but when it comes to the pronunciation in Sri Lanka, if you pronounce it wrong, it will give you a wrong meaning. And I have a problem with the... Uh, H H H problem. So ada, ada. Okay. Both both are the same ingredients. It varies only on the way that they have to cook it, like a cooking process, right? This they call the what is this? Kiri penny. <laughs> this is kiri penny, and this is kalududol. But the kiri penny is the first stage of the kalududol. The more you cook, the car Kerry penny, it will become a kalu doodle. Kalu means black, but I don't know what is doodle. But uh, on my knowledge, uh, kiri penny is made of. Uh, uh, what is uh, what is the ingredients for this? Coconut milk. Uh huh. And rice flour. Uh huh. Uh, so coconut, coconut milk, milk, rice flour, and coconut honey, right? Like and it. then. Okay, if you see it's saggy, it's shaking. Yes, so awesome. my husband, actually, I, I, my husband is just right beside me. He's, he's wanted, so he cannot be the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, doodle is like this. That's their term for doodle. You see that? Waggy, saggy, like, you know, shaky. That's doodle. So they call it kalu doodle. But why kalu doodle is that shaky? <laughs> it's not really the word. Okay, so anyway. Uh, so that's it. And then, in an arms giving in a party in Sri Lanka, New Year, arms giving, whatever is it, you will see that in their table they always have a banana. So I also have a banana. It's three of us in the house. I don't know why she gave four. Maybe she knows that I'm going to eat double. <laughs> and then, in Sri Lanka, normally, normally on the Kiribat, you, they will eat it with a spicy mixture. What you call that mixture? Luno miris. It's miris is spicy. Luno is onion or salt because salt is on luno. Onion is also luno. So normally it's fresh onion with a dried chili. I think they will soak the dried chili in the hot water, and then with some. Sometimes it's with the. Um, I will post a picture here of how it looks like but the ingredients is onion uh, dried chili sometimes they will put the Maldive fish that they called it here umbalakade, and then some of the salt. other spices the salt, salt yeah. and everything and then they will grind it on this cedar here I, I here here look at this yeah, that's their magic stone that's how they do it they will grind it like you know with this one Anyway, so that's how they eat, but I think the auntie knew that I don't... Not me, actually. I eat spicy. My husband don't eat spicy, so... I'm a little bit, you know, upset. <laughs> so, you know, joke. That I don't have it. At least I can show it to you guys, because I would prefer to eat it like that. But uh, they're thinking that I'm a foreigner. I don't like spicy. And yes, true, my husband don't like spicy, but me, I'm okay as long as in moderation. Okay, anyway, there's another one way to eat this one. So don't think that this is incomplete. To eat the kiribat in a sweet way. So it's this together. And I will show you how to eat it. Ah, uh, guys, there's a paripo here also. Paripo is a yellow lentils. Um, one of the main dishes of Sri Lanka. So you squeeze the kiribat. You better explain why I don't eat spice if they will think that I'm a Sri Lankan. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. There's a protest going on there. Protest. Okay, my husband is protesting. Half and a half, by the way. My husband is a half human, half Dalmatian, no joke. <laughs> half Sri Lankan, half Australian. He has a Sri Lankan skin, Sri Lankan face. 
but he has an Australian stomach so he don't eat spicy food he's very sensitive with that I don't want to waste money more with the tissues I don't have to mention I'm eating you know what I mean if he will eat a spicy food so I prefer not to than spending money for the tissue papers anyway so this is how to eat in a sweet way guys I'm sitting outside so my camera is a little bit a little bit farther than me so I can't show it closely but you you know how Sri Lanka eat right it's just a matter of mixing and mixing and Yeah, actually it's sweet. Mm, but it compliments. There's raisin salsa. I, I forget to make a sign of the cross. Thank you, Lord, for the food. Especially it's free, so I have to say double. Okay, so this is the sweet way of eating that. Licking your finger is a bonus. And there's another way. So maybe eating it with hey, that's a lot of life. Eating it with this one in a sweet way is for breakfast, and this was this will be the lunch one. And it's already late lunch, so it's brunch. Mm. Can I get a bunch? Come here. Which one you want? <laughs> Take a chair and sit here. I will not show you the camera. Come here. It's actually the confidentiality of the my ha, my husband's job that he cannot be the camera guys. He's not a camera shy. He always take picture. But because of the um, his job is very confidential, so he's not allowed to be in the social medias and everything. And I respect that. I'm leaving because of that money, so I have to, or else I have to ask him to find a new job. I prefer to eat it with a pan of and I will think this as a dessert. But though it complements rice, right? it's like. Sometimes I remember there's a food like sometimes we will eat the suman, the sticky rice. The suman, it's a sticky rice right, wrapped on the banana leaves. If I can get a picture somewhere, then I will post a picture also and for my foreign viewers who who's interested in what I'm talking about, especially my um, Sri Lankan viewers. There's a similar food we have in the Philippines. It's a sticky rice. And we used to eat it with a caramelized coconut uh, bukayo. Yeah, I think. It, and then you can eat it with the ripe mango. Yeah, we used to have that in the Philippines. Stick your rice, uh, wrap on a banana leaves. We called it suman. And then caramelized coconut, young fresh coconut. In Sri Lanka, you called it, um, what do you call the young coconut here? Yeah? The one that I used to eat. Kurumba. Kurumba, right. Kurumba is the, like uh, from middle of old and young, like light meat. So they caramelize it, we call it bukayo. And then you can eat it also with a ripe mango. How is it? Okay, anyway. Hmm, there's a lot of flies. Hmm? Guys, my background, sir. I don't know if you can see it. Is that my vegetable? Camera man, roll. They can see the rabbit. Ah, I have my rabbit at the back. The one in the small cage, that's only the four babies. I already placed them in the, in the cage. They're so annoying already inside. With their mother, and the rest seven is on the open area. Hmm. This is too heavy in the stomach. But I like the the paripo with the sticky rice. 
I don't know if I still can eat the desserts. Okay. And I have my coffee also. This one is kaludo dol, but I'm not really a fan of the kaludo dol. But I already give you an idea, guys. Kaludo dol is the um, kaludo dol will come from this one. This one actually tastes nice. I like this one. And then, um, wait, let me wash my hands. Back, back, back. Now I will try the this one. Moon cow. Excuse the flies. Flies wants to be in the camera also. I got some wisdom. Now, actually, guys, in, in Sri Lanka, this kalodudol, this is actually not included to the food that the auntie had given to me this morning. This one came from another guy. It's a supplier of one of our products that we use to, that we are selling in the shop. Uh, because this one, normally, if they would go far places, like I think the last time they went to Kataragama, it's a one place in Sri Lanka, very, very popular when it comes to, what is it? Offerings, like, you know, like, like, uh, like, uh, it's like, uh, please, please, please share me the words, I forget it. It's like, uh, a few moments later. Pilgrimage, yeah, it's like a pilgrimage. So it's a temple actually. So it's like a pilgrimage. So they will they went there. Normally relatives, whoever, if they will go to visit these places or they will go to a big town. There are towns that celebrate at the big feast. When they come, they will see they will bring this one and they will give it to whoever they want to give, like neighbors or something. We are not neighbors, but he gave me this, so I'm not really a fan unless it's really fresh. I used to eat this on the feast, you know, if you go to the feast, you can see a lot of these different, different colors. Okay, so get ready for this. The mung kao. So, crunchy in the outside. Hmm. Yeah, also this nice. Some of this I don't want to eat because it's very dry, but the auntie did the very best one for this. Hmm. Actually, my mother-in-law can, can make better also, but only if she's in the mood. Like mother, like son. <laughs> so inside this uh, mango beans and this little sweet. Baby, are they putting something with the mango? Yeah, the coconut honey. Ah, okay. So, mango beans with the coconut honey. This crunchy, though. I, I like this one. You want some more? Huh? I'm done. Hmm? Yeah, what did you eat then? Okay, that's it. Actually, guys, almost all of these are made of flour, rice. flour, flour, rice, mongo beans. So don't expect me to finish everything, okay? Because I will be double sized. Okay, this is that cookies, not cookies, cookies. Okay, I wish you can hear. Crunchy. This is a good pastime. It did have different designs. But it doesn't have any meaning. It's just depend on the molder that they're using. I remember one time, I think it was New Year. One of my neighbors actually this house here. In the side. They are the husband is a notary. She's a um, very good auntie also. One time she gave me this one on the new year. They give me food also. And she made this with the, I can see their spices inside. Like curry leaves or spring onions. It looks very colorful and very tasty. Because you can mix anything you want in the butter. This is not, I will post, it looks funny. This is actually the, the molder that they're using, okay? So it's like, don't know if it's stainless steel or metal or something. You have a butter, they will dip it in the butter, and then they will dip it in the hot oil. So it will shake. 
One day I wish I can go to the field just and show you the actual way how they cook it. This is nice, but it hurts my gut. Mm. Next is this one. This is the Cine Kelm. Cine Sugar. So I expect this is sweet. Atirasa. Mm. Not bad. Nice. I think I prefer this to the normal cow. But yes, it's very heavy in the stomach. It's raining. Thunder. So you can hear that noise like somebody is rolling some cans or something. Mm, I like this. You can get because of this um, like the the crispy edge. You can get the there's a taste like I like it's like the the burned honey taste. Mmm, that's nice. That's it. This one, it's a bread. My husband like this too much yellow color because it has a pineapple essence but gluten free so it's coated with the sugar very hard there you go it's inside typical bread they call this in Sri Lanka nyana kata hmm. nice with the coffee sorry to interrupt guys I have a small chit chat with my husband. He's always adding knowledge on what I'm supposed to talk here because he's a Sri Lankan. So <laughs> anyway, um, he he told me actually this this cow, not this the the, the origin, not original, the the known cow, the commonly uh, common cow that you will see. They said that the parties will never be complete without cow. It's because of not really like it will never be complete but it's like traditionally they already use for it it's like they value how the cow help Sri Lankan people survive even in their old old days cow is a very heavy food so i'm talking about the konda cow which is um, um common in all places the one that looks like this looks like this so you know what i mean it has a lamp on the side i will post a picture they said that in the old days, like weddings, parties, first thing it comes from hard work. They have to collect a bee honey to make that. But for now, they're now a little bit, you know, there's already a modernization going on. So now they have access with the coconut. They're already a process of making a coconut honey. So they're making it with a coconut honey. But the original one is made of a bee honey. So to collect a bee honey, it's very dangerous. So first thing, they give importance to it because they value it because it comes from a hard work. And then second thing, it's very heavy in the stomach. So normally if they will go to the party, they have to walk, you know, kilometers or something. So or so they one one piece of kaong actually will be good for good for whole day. So they value that. Even my husband actually told me that uh, uh, old days when Sri Lankan is still under the war, soldiers and army with the British, uh, when they're under British colony, when they are fighting for their freedom with the British people, all the soldiers are always have a um, uh, uh, box, large boxes of the Konda cow in their bag because easy to eat i mean like if you don't have to put down your gun if you eat it and then that's enough for you to give you energy for the rest of the time until you can get access to the right food and actually it's not only kunda cow uh i don't have time to make it but one day i will show it again at the party of the native tra traditional sri lankan food 
the halapa. The halapa is also a very heavy food. It's made of a coracum flour with a, um, uh, is it sugar? Just plain sugar, right? Or caramelized, you have to make the caram the sugar. There's a process of make to make it brown, but coracum flour itself is already brown and it's wrapped on a halapa leaves. Right, so that halapa is also very heavy. It used to be the the breakfast of the farmers. Yeah, it's a breakfast of the farmers because it's also heavy. Actually, Sri Lankan traditional foods are very heavy. It's just show how how hardworking the old Sri Lankan peoples are. Not now, kids now are very lazy. You know, they just have to push them. They just very they're just into school studies. After that, they think that if you had your diploma, you can have your, your job on your table. You don't do that much of hard work. I mean, excuse, not everybody, but most. Nothing compares to the old people. I mean, not only in Sri Lanka, Philippines, or ever. Now we are into modernization, you know, just... If you have an assignment, go to Google and check the assignments. But before, you know, it don't happen. How I wish we have a Google also before, then maybe I can do better. Anyway, so that's it. Then, ah no, I never taste this one yet. Okay, this one is also like a bread. Just a bread, then. This is also very heavy, guys. That's why I can't eat everything. But this is how it it's looks. It's also with a coconut honey. Yeah, it's a, it's a flour with a coconut honey. Coconut honey, yeah, Sri Lanka, coconut is... Although, I, I don't know, shame on us Filipino. We, we are the second largest uh, coconut... Uh, plantations in the whole world and Sri Lanka I think is on the, the fifth but there's a lot of things that you have to find out one day I will surely upload that video because I'm proud of it because we have a company our own company that we are doing that that I never thought that we can do that I will give you a hint in Philippines after we husk the coconut we throw the husk the only thing that we can use the husk is for firewoods or bunot right bunot uh bunot see here this is the one i don't know how to call it in english but we call it in philippines bunot just to cleaning the house in sri lanka there is a lot of things you can do with this firewood this has that we use as a firewood you can make a broom you can make a brush you can make a mop i not mop sorry you can make a um what do you call this mats you can make a mats you can make a net you can make a rope and we are exporting that. There's yeah, the Sri Lanka actually is literally you can say that coconut is the tree of life in Sri Lanka because they use every single part. Although Filipino, we are aware of that. We are aware of that. I know there are some places already in the Philippines that they're using it, but I wish I can share more more knowledge about it because I learned a lot from here especially from our own company credit to my husband he built that company and that's that's our source of another income that um, we are we are doing that and I have an experience of doing everything so I can share one day I will bring you to that guys I will show you uh, maybe not exactly in our factory but um, I will show because it goes with the different different uh, companies depends on the license that you are allowed you can just make wires or you can make rope you can make the process of the rope so anyway so this is also heavy mm, that's that day eh? uh, of all the food main course sweet side these two complements but i prefer this one with the paripu and then maybe with that that um what you call this the luno luno miris auntie if you're listening you missed to give me the Luno Miris. <laughs> I will just eat some banana. But all of these, my favorite is this one. ta -da! I like this. I like this one. Not the whole part. I like only the side. Uh, what is this? Atirasa. So, number one, atirasa. This one is okay. Good for pastime. But it hurts my gums. And yeah, this one, I'm not a fan of this, but this time I like this one because of the way, the way they cook it. Some people, they cook it very dry. So that's it for now. I will enjoy the rest until which one I can finish. I will eat the banana and I will drink the coffee. And thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and kick that bell button below to get, not, get notified.
if you are interested with the Sri Lankan cultures and everything. And then, um, thank you for the support, guys. I'm going for 100. Please support. Bye, life. Be life. Thank you.